Hello, I'm Bradley, and welcome to my channel. Now, this has been something which I have been putting off for a little bit of, uh, for a little bit of time, um, just because I was really, really positive in thinking that I was going to be able to update my channel with uh, quite a positive milestone. Many of my subscribers would have known that I have suffered with real horrendous, horrible problems since having uh, hernia repair surgery twice. So just a little bit of background very, very quickly. Uh, November 2017, I had a feminal hernia repair, quite a horrible, nasty experience. It got to the point I couldn't walk around before the operation where it was that bad. Lots of problems with sort of my leg, causing me problems in my leg, and it gave me a horrific uh, bladder problem as well. Um, that was repaired, um, but I was very slow to recover, had lots of problems. And then sort of fast forward into July 2018, I had another hernia repaired on the same side. Again, very slow to recover, had lots of problems. Um, and then shortly after that, felt uh, another lump again in the same area. Again, lots of problems. Each time I've had lots of problems with my leg, lots of problems with my bladder. Um, and then eventually as time progresses, um, lots of problems with pressure um, in that groin area, lots of pins and needles. Um, but rather than having any other sort of exploratory or anything ever done, I have had steroid injections, I have had physiotherapy, I have had all different sort of pain medications, um, some of which have really not reacted well with my hearing imbalance. Um, because I also have a problem with my hearing um, and I also have a problem with my balance. Uh, the two go hand in hand. I think if you've got a hearing related problem, um, it usually affects your balance because of course of the inner ear. Now I've had a lot of problems uh, since, since probably most of my life actually in regards to hearing. Um, I'm deaf on my left side and I have a very small hearing loss. I say small, that's me being positive um, hearing loss and mine is sensory profound hearing loss. So it's really quite difficult. It's quite difficult to cope with as well as I have tinnitus too. Um, and I also have a problem with my balance. So I lose my footing quite easily, um, go off to the side quite easily, um, bump into things quite a bit that happens. So of course having the hernia related issues as well on top of that was quite difficult to bear. Um, so that was 2018, had that hernia um, repair 2018 and that was July. I was very slow to recover. In fact, I don't believe I actually returned to work much before that Christmas season of that year. Um, and then straight away after that, I was having problems again. At that same time, unfortunately, I was having lots of problems gastrically. Um, I had lots of gastric issues, lots of um, acid indigestion, burning. Um, and I went through a really scary phase of actually having the health scare. And um, you can probably imagine what I'm... Um, what I what I kind of am trying to say there, but I don't I don't want to sort of put that out there at all. That was really scary for me and my family. Um, and after that, 2019, uh, I had lots of problems all throughout 2019 with highly related issues. Um, and then I believe it was December 2019, I was diagnosed with having a third hernia there, um, a recurrent one of the feminal repair. So I've had feminal and inguinal. Um, 2020 had lots of problems last year from about March. Uh, 2020, it really started to sort of progress from December 2019 to March 2020, and it was really affecting me being able to put my leg to the ground on my right side, which is where I've had my hernia repairs as well. With that came lots of colour, um, lots of colour loss, lots of blue colour sensation, um, pins and needles, um, bladder related problems all the way through this. Um, it's, a, it's been a real difficult journey. Um, actually, uh, last September, so September 2020, I had a bladder operation to try to correct some overactive bladder uh, symptoms, um, which I had from having had my surgeries, I believe. Um, I have had bladder distension surgery, uh, which which has really significantly helped. Um, unfortunately, I am having some problems come back, but then having said that, I'm also having problems severely uh, with my groin and this suspected hernia fell. Both of my two hernia operations are classed as fells. Um, and 
it, it's getting to the point now where it's, I mean, since March of last year to now, it's very difficult to get about for me. It's, it's, this is me being real. I'm very positive and I'm very upbeat, but um, sometimes that takes a lot of energy because I have had so many months of walking around with quite a severe limp of not being able to put any weight. Um, I have crutches to help me around, but I really don't get on with them very, very well. Um, I've tried different medications, um, nerve-related pain medications, which have not agreed with me at all. With um, It seems to really, really disturb my hearing and balance problems. Um, so that's sort of like a no for me. But I'm really proud of the fact that I haven't had any time off of my work. I work from home. Of course, we're all going through this pandemic at the moment, so it makes it much, much more difficult as well. All my appointments and things are being cancelled. Um, and I had this lifeline that I met the criteria for this specialist clinic um, to be able to help me with post-operative um, issues and pain after hernia surgeries. Um, there's been discussions about me having the mesh removed because they possibly think that the first mesh um, to repair the feminal hernia had failed. They think that the mesh may have moved from either one of my operations. Um, but what happened about a fortnight ago is I have started in that time period, in about the last two weeks, um, the pain gets so much in my groin and that sort of pinching sensation when I bend, if I pick up anything heavy and I really struggle. So now I don't, I, I have to be really careful. I can't pick up anything heavy or anything like that at all. Um, it does make me come over feeling very lightheaded. And um, actually two weeks ago, I was in the bathroom and I honestly felt so strange. I, I leant forward to wash my hair. And as you know from my channel, my hair is very important to me, all different styles and things. Hope it looks cool today. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, I felt the most immense pain, stabbing pain. And with that, as I pulled my head back up, I came over feeling really lightheaded. And I honestly thought that I was going to faint. So with that, I shouted for somebody because I was in the bathroom. In fact, actually, I was in the bath. Um, and it's really difficult, of course, to step into the bath with how my leg is, but our shower in our home is, there's a step up. So it's difficult both ways for me. And then standing still is really difficult for me. Even sitting is very uncomfortable. Even lying in bed at night is very uncomfortable. It wakes me up. I have to move around with this, this discomfort because, of course, now it's affecting my back and my hip, um, which is really, really uncomfortable. Um, and anyway, I was in, I was in the bath and I felt this funny, horrible sensation come over me. And as I sort of, with all my might, lunged myself up because I thought there's no way this is going to happen to me whilst I'm in the bath. Number one, I've got nothing on if anybody needs to come in. Um, number two, I really, really need to get out of here. Um, this isn't happening to me. I really try and, and I know we can't always control what happens to us, but I thought I, I really need to take back some control here. And as I lunged myself up, of course, I felt like I'd really done something because I sort of lost my footing in the bath and done sort of like this weird manoeuvre. So since then, it's got a lot worse with the pain and discomfort and I get these real sharp stabbing pain sensations. On top of that, which was really, really fantastic news, was I received a phone call from the clinic, which I was meant to be receiving an appointment through. Now, on this particular clinic where I'm meant to be going, it's about two hours from where I live, um, which is a big worry of mine of how I was going to get there because I cannot travel very far in the car at all. Um, number one, I'm not very good with my side of my groin being in that position. I find it very difficult. Um, I have a real overbearing pressure. I have pain in my scar. I have pain up above, in the bottom of my back, down the inner thigh of my right leg, right the way down to my foot. Um, so I had the call. Uh, that I was going to have the appointment on this past Monday, um, which has just gone. So it is Thursday now. So this Monday just gone, I was due to go to the hospital, the clinic where I was meant to uh, be seen by this top um, renowned surgeon. I believe actually he's world renowned, um, really very high up top here in the UK for on the Hernia Board of Repairs, I believe, and um, a specialist in post-operative issues. In my intention, I was going was... Um, I was I wanted to talk about what what happens if I if I discussed with them about having this mesh out and had something different, because I've always said before I had any mesh or two pieces of mesh, a mesh cone for the feminal repair, a mesh plate for the inguinal repair before I had any of that and lymph nodes taken away in my first operation um, before I had any of that in the exploratory. I never had a problem. I never had a problem with my bladder. I never had a problem with my leg or anything like that at all. Um, 
and now I've got so many problems. I am only 27 and I feel a lot older and I have a lot of difficulties, a lot of difficulties. Um, which it pains me to say that. It pains me to say that. I cannot get on with my life with this problem. I cannot get on with my life. Um, and anyway, so much was riding on this appointment on Monday. It was the thing that was really getting me through because it's been getting really bad again. So from March, if you imagine March 2020, I had discomfort there because, of course, I was diagnosed in December 2019 of having another recurrent hernia, so a third one. There's been problems throughout that sort of time. I've been in an A&E &E several times with pain, discomfort throughout the night, unbearable, excruciating pain where something's dropped, something, amount of pressure. People have said it was too much scar tissue there. Somebody said it was the mesh moving. Somebody said that it wasn't a hernia. Somebody said it was something out of place there. I've just had so much. Um, do I feel a lump there drop down? Yes, I do. Do I think I have another hernia there? Probably, because I have all the symptoms of when I had the hernia there. And anybody may think that a hernia is just this sort of bulge. Yes, it is. And I wish mine would have been simple, but it seems to get larger with me. It seems to give me so much pressure, so much pain to the point I cannot put my leg to the ground. Um, or it's really very difficult for me. So then, of course, you adopt this walk and you pull yourself over more and it's playing up my back. I do subconscious. I subconscious. I really try to keep myself up straight and I really try to keep myself positive and on top of everything but it's difficult it's difficult so there was a lot riding on this appointment and in this clinic I was meant to be it was a whole day a specialist clinic I was meant to see a pain specialist I was meant to see a top surgeon about helping me with a plan going forward what was going to do and what what, what was what was going to be done for me um whether they were going to look at the nerves, they were also going to look at giving me some steroid injections, which I had last year, but they wanted to scan the nerves as I was there and they were going to inject in specific nerves just to give me some relief before the plan of what we were doing would come up. Um, they were going to talk about um, some sort of nerve operation um, or even potentially a mesh removal operation. Um, the Sunday evening, I had a phone call from the receptionist of the clinic um, to advise me that the clinic was cancelled because um, the surgeon, or I can't remember if it was the surgeon or the pain specialist, um, was showing symptoms of COVID. So he was self-isolating. So, of course, with that, this week, it's Thursday now, this week has taken me a lot to get over that. It's taken me, um, you can imagine, can't you? I just feel so isolated, so stuck, so when, when will things change? Um, what to do now? So, yeah. Pretty rubbish. I really thought that um, we were moving somewhere and I'm sure it will happen. Um, I have already now been given my appointment uh, in around about five weeks time on the 15th of March. That will be when I will see all these top people in this top clinic to hopefully uh, start planning or arranging the steps for me to get my life back. Um, so yeah, I, I I'm already questioning how on earth am I going to get there. Unfortunately, last week I had to have a couple of days with not signing on, um, two days with not signing on to work. But luckily I was able to take that as some leave over to me. So I feel really proud about that fact. But um, that I, I didn't have to use anything for sickness. And I know that's not a big thing if you have to, if you're unwell, then there's nothing more important than your health. And I absolutely realise that. I really, really do. Um, I'm an absolute avid believer that you have to stay positive in this life. And you have to treat every day as though it is a gift. And I certainly try to do that. And I'm positive for any, for everyone, friends, family, people who I've just, just met. Um, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? And I love helping people as well. That's another thing. Um, I have a fantastic support network. My parents are absolutely incredible. Um, and, and yeah, but it's not like... Being able to just walk down that street without a worry about health, without a worry of causing more pain, more discomfort. If you're just going to be going for a short walk, what's it going to be feeling like later? That type of thing. It's been real difficult. It's coming up to four years now since I've had hernia related problems and problems with my bladder as well. Um, not simple problems, extensive, horrible, major issues. But 
we remain positive. My channel, as ever, is all about the journey of life. <laughs> You'll notice I've updated that with great hair. We're going through that journey with great hair. But it's truly about the good, the bad of what's thrown at me in life. And I turn to my channel to kind of express that, to talk about that, to to use it almost as this tool to be able to, if I don't want to talk to anybody else about it, or if I don't want to share what I'm feeling, I can share it with the screen, I can share it with the camera. And do you know what? Some of the comments I have got back absolutely are so heartwarming and have really given me a lot of strength. So I have been meaning to update this all week, um, but I've just been so gutted since Monday. So that brings me to the point of saying, Thank you very much for sharing this with me. Thank you for listening. And if you do have any comments or questions, please ask away. Please don't sort of be too, don't, don't be weary to ask a question. It's been an absolute nightmare of a journey. Um, and I take strength from questions like that as well. So thank you very, very much. And until next time, we will see you then. And I promise you, I will be sort of dusted down, polished, more positive and ready to go with the channel and the clips and everything which I love to bring to my channel. Thank you very much. Until next time, we will see you then. Bye-bye now.